Okay, Brambro back with some Grand Tactician Civil War in the CSA campaign with 1.06 beta. Right, so right at the end of the last episode, we had a bit of a cataclysm. <laughs> and I even tacked on at the end of that episode saying, okay, well, we're done with this campaign until... 1.0619 and also uh, I'm gonna have to start new because basically any save from 1.0618 is screwed well so I expected it to be several days before I was able to do anything and I expected to do a new campaign but on the first count well 1.0619 came out it is in effect and um, so here we go you know uh, and then second I think it saves that saves that were made under 1.0618 is what was screwed so what I've done is I have gone back to an earlier I, I went back and, and to look for a save which I knew was early enough that it was done under 1.0617 before 1.8 went into effect. And 1.8 went into effect on May 6th. So we're rolling back a little bit, but really not that far. This save that you're looking at right now is at the same point where I made a save in, in 1.7. However, I have saved again in 1.9. And then just kind of went around and double checked to see if things looked right, and they do. So, um... Timeline wise, in the campaign universe, we're starting back a ways. However, this save in, in the game version, it is a 1 9 save. And I, I even forwarded time just a little bit just to make sure that things didn't go all haywire. And, and they didn't. So I think we're okay. And, uh, and so I'm trying to keep this campaign alive. Uh, partly because I was enjoying it, um, partly because I didn't really want to go through and have to do all the sticking political officers and forts and all that crap again, and partly because I really like the thumbnail I made for this <laughs> campaign, and I don't want to come up with a new one. I want to keep using that one. <laughs> so, let's reorient to where exactly we are right now. And we are basically at the tail end of uh, episode four, start of episode five. Of course, this is going to be episode eight. But So the battle, let me turn off the front line. So the battle of Alexandria has just finished. And so uh, Beauregard is here. He's got his red readiness. And Patterson is sitting in Alexandria, which is ours, but he's sitting in it. And of course, the Battle of Winchester occurred earlier. Well, we can see here in the telegrams. You know, we had the Battle of Winchester a little while back. There was some movement. And then the last two things that happened were the Battle of Alexandria, or Battle of Winchester up here. And, uh, and then this was the wounding of Jackson and Evans. So those are the last two events. At this point, we have not yet built those two gold-plated forts here. And guess what? I ain't gonna. <laughs> I may talk myself into building one, but I ain't gonna build two forts there for sure. And oh, by the way, just to be fair to the game, you know, this tooltip here, it... It does warn you, hey, this is going to cost $18 million. <laughs> You don't have to build it before you find out. Oh. Uh, so there is that. 
And, and, and of course, that also shows, no, they didn't fix the price of forts in 1.9. As far as I could tell from the notes, the only thing they did... 1.9 is basically just fixing that infrastructure bug, which was pretty bad. I mean, that was update-worthy in itself. So they hopped on that. Ooh, we need to get this out now. What You know, kudos to them. It needed to be done quickly. And so, just to confirm that, yeah! So this Tallahassee New Orleans Railroad, it's there. <laughs> As it should be. And we're back to the same railroad situation. Where there's just two eligible to be built, and these all those other ones are, in fact, you know, in existence. So that's cool. Yeah, I'm liking that. Um, we have not built those forts, nor have we built the markets down here. And I think that was a pretty sound strategy, and I think I'm just going to, I am going to go ahead and build those markets. And uh, let's see, we have the one at New Orleans, and so we need one for Biloxi. $971k. And I think we, we, you know, we went through and at least in my mind I kind of established, yeah, that's a pretty good deal. Um, but based on feedback from one commenter, though, we don't really know the area of effect, but uh, Julian's done some testing, and it appears to him that the area of effect is pretty small. And you're, you know, basically, you kind of need to dedicate it to one IIP. You know, yeah, you can't really, like, stick it like back here and cover several you can when you or it looks it looks like you know as far as we've been able to test it looks like if you upgrade the market it's it's area of effect will expand and cover more but its actual effect doesn't increase so that unless unle, until and unless we get uh more evidence or there's a change to the contrary I think the thing to do with these things if that's true is leave them at tier one and then just uh, you know pinpoint just stick it right on the IIP that you're really looking to boost so I'm gonna do that right there next to the port interestingly you know, it said cost 971, but right there, it just said 96k, like 10% of that. I wonder if that's a top. That smells like a typo to me. Yeah, 971, 96k. That smells like a typo. That should have been. 960k, 971k, because that seems pretty cheap. I, I, you know, this feels like a much more likely number <laughs> than less than a hundred thousand for a market. <clears throat> I want to look at this mark. Um, that's a two-tier market. So we can upgrade, oh, because, you know, it's the only market I got to show. So this is a tier two market, and if I upgrade it, which will expand its area of effect as far as we can tell for now. But upgrading costs 9.2 million. If a tier one market costs about 1 million, and upgrading two to three cost about nine million. Then, kind of extrapolating from the pattern we're seeing with other buildings, I'm guessing that upgrading from a one to two on a market is probably something like three, three and a half million, right? So, if later I want to expand the area 
you know, if, if there's another IP over here, these aren't IPs, these are industries, so I don't really know how that affects them. <clears throat> but let's say there was an IP, like another town or something, like right here, and we wanted to expand the transportation transportation capacity there. Then my options would be I could upgrade this market for probably about three million or I could just build another tier one market here right on it for one million. So if it's true that upgrading only expands area of effect but does not upgrade the effect itself if that holds true then I think the answer with markets it's a big if right and this is speculative I'm not saying this is the way markets work but right now I'm thinking that spamming tier 1 markets might be the best way to go instead of upgrading fewer markets now if it turns out that it does improve the amount of effect you get more and more transportation improvement well then that model would be stood on its head so we'll just see how it goes as we go along I wonder if there's another let's look at some of these other markets That's a tier two market. Uh, was there one up here at Richmond? No. Okay. I guess we don't have any tier one markets already on the map. All right. So let me finish this. And I want to put a market at uh, Mobile. near the port see if there's any other IAPs real real close uh, can I scooch this in where it's right next to that bridge too sure there we go okay that okay 879k interesting why did this one only cost 96k? And they look a little variable too. I wonder if there's a I wonder if it factors in how developed the area is. Huh. Uh this is a pretty big port. I'm going to go ahead and plop one at Pensacola. I did not last time. Partially because I know that I'm saving money by not buying <laughs> two forts this time. Let's see how much this one costs. It's predicting a flat... The, it, it's always showing 971k, but let's see what it actually is when I plop it. Uh, 971k, okay. I don't know if this fort actually blocks trade at the harbor mouth. I have a funny feeling it doesn't. Fort Pickens. And then finally, um, it was mentioned, hey, if you stick stuff way out in the boonies, it doesn't seem to work as well. Like, there's got to be other infrastructure around it. And there's not even a road coming down here. But, I got to do it. You know? Why? Because it gives me an opportunity to keep saying Apalachicola. <laughs> That's all there is. And it's, it's less expensive. 779k. Apalachicola. And let's see. Um, I kind of put an extra market over there at Pensacola, but uh, I think we had a market here at Savannah. I think that's... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that again. Nine seventy. 
Okay. All right. Avoiding my fort spam mistake from the earlier episodes and repeating it with a market spam <laughs> mistake. Do I want a Wilmington? Um, let's, let's see what the... Yeah, th yeah, I think so. And it is going to get blockaded. It's not yet, but I'm, here's the guy. It's going to be. I don't know if it's going to get blockaded as heavily as some of the others, though. I'm not sure that squadron is really all that huge. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Is there any other eye in... To the extent that it helps at all. This right here, it should cover this little fairy too. Okay, now they're all like just right on 971k. Uh, I'm not going to do Moorhead City. I don't think that's actually a very big port. Well, it's actually, well, yeah, it's bigger than I thought it was. Okay, uh, I, I, I don't want to go too far with it. It, it. it is a tier two port, too. Like this, I wouldn't do Elizabeth City. It's a tier one port. And, and well, here I am, double... 4.5 million in volume for taxes and tariffs. You know what? I'm going to let the economy run a little bit before it, it takes it takes a little bit of time running to kind of get the economy working, which it has been. This isn't a campaign start, but let's see how. I, I don't know. There's more volume in these ports than I thought there would be. And I do know that for sure Gosport is actually the single biggest uh, port in the Confederacy. It's four tiers. Frankly, I didn't know it went up to four tiers. I thought it I thought buildings maxed out at three. I guess ports don't. And it's gonna get blockaded. It's blockaded now. Well, it will be momentarily because this squadron is in blockade mode but I, I'm gonna go ahead and put a market here as well because even under blockade you know there is still gonna be some traffic that gets through here and that's a that's our that's the biggest port we got Okay, I think I've done enough with markets. Uh, I'm not building these forts up here. And what was the other thing that we were doing? I'm obviously not building the New Orleans-Tallahassee Railroad because that's been built. So that leaves open, do I want to build one of these railroads? And I don't know. These, these pretty expensive. Um... 6.2 million expected construction time 265 days but see we're building other stuff we, we've learned this and I don't think that was a bug this tooltip when you hover over a railroad in this case but I bet it's true for other things as well 
<clears throat> it's projecting construction time 265. If I actually build it, we're going to find out, oh, it's a lot longer than that. Matter of fact, let's just, I'm going to go ahead and just demonstrate that again now that we know what we're looking for. So it's saying 265 days. I build it. And now, and that was the. Well, it's here somewhere. Was it Houston and Galveston? No, I don't think so. Uh, maybe I need to refresh the. Was it Houston and Shreveport? Okay. Construction time, 530 days. Wow. It, it didn't almost... It, it, that, it exactly doubled. That is exactly twice 265. And we don't have another railroad building. That's not what's causing it. So it has to be the... Uh, all the, the markets... And I think we've also got like a prison camp and a hospital and stuff building as well. Who interesting. Okay. One other economic thing going on in this I did this early in the campaign, and so it's still active here, too. <clears throat> this iron mine near Knoxville. It is, in the it is still in the process of being upgraded. I think I did that in episode one. Or maybe episode two. And I would do it again. This is the only iron mine in the Confederacy. That's it. All of our foundries and our ironworks depend on this source of iron ore, and that's all there is to it. So, yeah, it was expensive to upgrade. I forgot the number. Um, but I would do it again, and if I hadn't done it, I would do it now. And when it reaches Tier 2, however long that takes, I will probably, well, we'll take a look at the... Um, buildings here and see in the goods window but I will probably upgrade it again and so how are we doing for foundries let's just go confederacy we only have three foundries so we only have three places for this iron ore to go two of them are in Tennessee Memphis and Nashville and then the biggest one is Catherine Furnace which is up north of it says Richmond here because that's the closest, you know, uh, major town. But it's actually up here near Fredericksburg. It's a little dicey, right? I mean, there's going to be a lot of fighting in here. And even if we manage to hang on to it all or most of the time, there could be, you know, just because there's going to be a lot of fighting in here, it could get degraded. Uh, and then really kind of the same thing from Memphis and... Uh, Nashville as well you know basically our iron production capacity it, it's all kind of up on the front line or close to it <laughs> these are places where the Union is going to want to go um, and so I think I would I think I'd like to have another foundry that's kind of further down into the deep south and for that yeah, I'm thinking somewhere in Alabama, somewhere in, and not up like in the north part either. You know, somewhere like in the middle of Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, if we can. But we know we're going to need workforce for that. So let's pop on our workforce. Uh, you know, so Tuscaloosa, Tuscaloosa looks like a nice place. Maybe Grenada. Um... 
but the iron ore itself is coming from Knoxville. So I'm looking at, if I combine looking at the, the supply network, you know, here's the railroad coming down this way, and our workforce heat maps, someplace like Columbus, Milledgeville, Madison, August, these look like good places to put another foundry. And I am going to do that. And I want to, I want it, I don't know how close it really needs to be to the railroad, you know, for supply capacity. This has got to be okay right here. I'm going to put a foundry here. Which aren't super cheap, but they're not 18 million. Uh, oh, 2 million. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put a foundry here. close to Madison. Okay, so new foundry here. Iron ore coming down this railroad. And in, in at least a decent it's not it's not the the densest, but in a in a decent workforce spot. So I kinda went through that just to kind of show, hey, you know, we said before in previous versions of the game you get these heat maps, I don't really know what to do with these. Yeah, now in 1.06, there's kind of a practical application of, you look at your supply network, you look at your workforce, you look in here to see where your stuff is. Um, I think y'all get the idea. All right. Okay, our army situation is, you know, it's right after that Battle of Alexandria. So Beauregard has been successful, but he's pretty toasty. He's down to ten, uh, less than eleven thousand men, and uh, you know, Jackson, uh, Jackson, and Evans have been wounded. What do we do about this? Okay. Yeah, I, I have already made those replacements. I did that at the end of the... I had already done that before this save. So, William Walker is in charge of Jackson's old division. He's pretty good. He's not a Jackson, but he's not chopped liver either. And then I think I put Hayes in charge of uh, Evans' brigade. Which is low. Which is below 800 men. Just double check our stock of weapons. Not much. Do have Springfield muskets? Eh. Uh, the 12 pounder howitzers it's only showing two pieces that is because I I think I have ordered some or I equipped a brigade and I, I think I've ordered some already I think I ordered some 24 pounders too I think I don't know I could order more, but this right here, expected delivery time 38 days, I don't know if this is reflecting an order I already made, or if that's just how long it would take if I ordered some. That would be a good display in here to make more clear. Uh, do you have active orders that are ticking down in time for delivery? I don't know. 
I remember doing it. I just don't remember if I did it before or after this save. Let's see what it just... For, yeah, it's the same exact display with the clock and everything for other weapons that I know I haven't ordered. So, I honestly don't know if I've ordered those howitzers or not. I know this. Even if I have ordered more howitzers, I'm going to want more even after that. <laughs> so I'm going to order another. I'm going to order another eight. Oh, it gives you a little. Okay, so that's the difference. It'll show a little clocky thing up here. All right. So I had not ordered those. Okay, answered that question. And do, and then Okay, yeah, and it gives you a tool tip. Eight pieces have been ordered and are awaited are awaited in thirty one point eight days. I technically that's not grammatically incorrect, but that's it's kind of awkward language. Alright, enough of that. We do have, uh, I had already set up these uh, recruiting commands, and but not all the units are there yet. I'm not quite ready, I think, to transfer brigades up to the field armies. Uh, and we know what's probably going to happen is that McDowell is going to get kind of reconstituted, and he's going to come back down this way. That's what he did last time. Does it mean he's going to do it this time? No. So for now, I'm going to do what I... Uh, I'm going to keep Beauregard here because as soon as I move him, Patterson will start capturing Alexandria. So he stays here. He needs to reconstitute his readiness. Uh, he's in defensive mode. That is good. That'll give, him def that'll give us defensive points if we get attacked for more trenches. M-O-A-R, all caps. However, I am not going to tie Johnston to this area by committing him to building forts. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move Johnston to right about here in a position where I believe he will be able to reinforce Beauregard, but he can still come up here and respond to an attack uh, another attack on Winchester. Garnet is capturing Grafton. That hasn't happened yet. Almost done with our news agency. Still building a hospital at Nashville. Uh... Johnston has his, he's got his initial forces, more recruiting down here at Decatur. I'm going to go ahead and move him up to Bowling Green. Oh, by the way, I showed that it does tell you the cost for a Ford. It also... Shows you the cost for a supply depot. 1.9 million. It's not super stupid expensive like the Ford, but uh, that's considerable. And I would bet, okay, it, that's 1.9 million for the depot itself. That is not counting. I don't see how it can count, really. After the depot gets built, then you have to populate it, right? You have to actually, you know, the economy has to actually fill that depot up. And that's going to, you know, that creates a drag too. So kind of depot spamming, I think, is, is going to uh, be harder to do. You know, before you would just, okay, I'm covered by this depot. And then I move up a little bit, and now I need to build another depot, 
and then I move up a little bit, and then I need to build another depot. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if that's going to be viable anymore. Because you're chucking out there almost 2 million every single leapfrog. But then if you don't, you know, then your armies go into low supply. Uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of think that's going to make things a little more static. And I was already kind of on the static end of the spectrum with how I played this game before, as y'all have seen. Okay. And here we are again. There's Price. We know Lions is here. Go up and uh, attack him again. We saw what happened last time. It was a pretty bloody battle and we wound up losing it. I'm going to do it again though. Maybe not this episode. I know I've been jabbering for a while. I mean, I can't be afraid to fight ba battles just because there might be something wanky in the uh, retreat phase. And like I said in the last episode, when I was thinking about my thoughts on why that battle occurred the way it is, I'm not 100% certain it's really a flat-out bug. I think I'm running into these situations because I'm taking more casualties than I have in previous campaigns. And that is causing maybe some mechanics to come into play toward the end of a battle for a retreat phase that simply don't run into in the past as much. And I'm not a real technical guy on this stuff, so there's probably different terms for this, but in my mind, and maybe I need to be informed with more appropriate terms, but I kind of think of, you know, there's bugs and then there's bugs. On the, on the one hand, a real bug is something that just, something is just flat, not something actually wrong in the code that makes something really, you know, completely unintended happen but then there's I don't know I'd call it like maybe like a soft bug <laughs> in that there's a mechanic in there or you know something written into the code that is you know they didn't mess up the coding and what's happening is what they intended to happen however it then kind of has second order unintended effects you know yeah am i making that distinction clear right okay this you know this little mechanic yeah that's what we wanted to happen however we didn't really think that that was going to cause this other thing to happen after that and it's not a case of correcting what they did before but maybe adjusting it Right, okay, so we still want that thing to happen, however, you know, let's tweak it down a bit or tweak it up a bit, you know, so that the overall effect and gameplay is more where we want it. So, uh, I, I kind of have a feeling that this retreat phase thing, there's something going on there more like that second description. I don't know, I may have just completely not only confused viewers, but confused myself with that little soliloquy. Let's get time rolling, see what happens. <laughs> so we're capturing Grafton. Johnson should be moving momentarily over here. Moving up into Kentucky with, with the other Johnson, Albert Sidney Johnson. We're issuing bonds, surprise, surprise, with a billion markets having been... I think I built even more markets than I did before. Yeah, we... yeah. 
and some of those uh actually a lot of those ports that weren't immediately blockaded they're blockaded now as soon as time started rolling that's historical flavor Oh, right. Okay, so one thing I wanted to do is at the beginning of the game, I disestablished a few squadrons, which then left me... Whoa, something got built. News agency is built. I wanted to... I wanted to... Uh, but what I did when I disestablished those, disestablished those was I lost vision. I can't even see, you know, the fleet that is blockading here. Which is mildly irritating. So I am going to go back and... Uh, Galveston... Well, it's not letting me. I wonder if you can't build a fleet in a floor... Uh, yeah, blocked. Okay. I think that might be new. I think we could do that before. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess I'm going to build it Sabine Pass then. Just one, Just one ship. All I'm looking for is vision. That's it. Okay, that's done. Were there any other places? Anyway, I'll, I'll look for those off camera. And uh, I've been going on... Uh, I think I've been going on long enough. And we're reset now. With, you know, got everybody at... Oh, there comes West Virginia Militia. What's happening over here? Yeah, he was coming down here to Grafton, caught sight of Garnet, and decided he didn't want any more of that, so he's headed back up. Do we see McDowell? We we do. There he comes. Okay. I think that will do for this episode. Kind of got everybody reacclimated as to where we are in the campaign. Uh, having rolled back a couple episodes and fingers crossed we will be able to continue with this campaign looking at stuff in 1.06 uh, without uh, the kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> catastrophe that we had in 1.0618. In any case, um... Uh, if you like what I'm doing, leave a like, leave a comment, maybe a subscribe. But at any rate, thank you very, very much for watching. I appreciate it.